Hey kiddos and welcome to your fourth Monday message with Miss Cantu. How are you guys doing this week? Well, I'm really excited this week because on Wednesday there's a holiday and this holiday is one of my favorites and it's one that you can celebrate even while you're stuck at home. So what holiday is it? Do you know? I don't think he's telling if he does. What about you guys? Do you know what holiday it is on Wednesday? It's Earth Day. Earth Day is a very fun, special holiday. We get to celebrate our own planet. Yes, the one we live on. It's called Earth. <laughs> so what kinds of things can we do to celebrate on Earth Day? Well, many people will plant trees. They'll go outside and enjoy the weather if it's nice enough. Check your local forecast before you go outside. And then they will find ways to do things that will make the planet even better and help it stay healthy. So one thing that I like to do on Earth Day is plant trees. I also like to walk around parks and pick up any trash that I see because that helps keep some of the pollution away, right? Helps take away some of that littering, which we know is definitely a bad thing. So think about some ways that maybe you can help on Earth Day at home. Now, what I have for you this week, we are going to be reading a book and it is one of my absolute favorites. We are going to read The Lorax. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty guys, so today we are reading The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. Now, I'm sure some of you guys have seen the movie before, but I think you'll be a little bit surprised to see how the book is different from the movie. So let's go ahead and get started. Ooh, we're looking a little spooky there. At the far end of town where the crickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing, excepting old crows. It's a street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Onceler still lives there. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the Onceler, don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffered moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail, and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snub, his secret strange hole in his grooveless glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Sloop down sloops the whisper my phone to your ear, and the old onceler's whispers are not very clear. 
since they have to come down through a snurgly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back, Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swami swans rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze and under the trees I saw the brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits from the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around but those trees, those trees, those truffula trees. All my life I'd been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. And in no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a thneed. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazoop. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I'd chopped down. It was a sort of man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffula tuft? Look, Lorax, I said. There's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a need. A need to find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You could use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers of bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth that would buy that fool's need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along, and he thought that the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor silly guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Hush up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here. Here's a wonderful chance for the whole Onesler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken. Sharp right at South Stitch. 
and in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wansler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting needs just as busy as bees to the sound of the chopping of truffula trees. Then, <laughs> oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffula trees at one smacker. We were making needs four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please, but I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who played in the shade in their barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go round, and my poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they've got gas and no food in their tummies. They don't look very healthy or happy anymore. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried and he sent them away. I, the one slayer, felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I, I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger. So bigger I got, I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of the thneeds I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more thneeds, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, <coughs> he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled, he snarled, he sniffed. Wunsler, he cried with a crepulous croak. Wunsler, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. Hey guys, I want you to look at the color of that sky. And I'm going to flip back a few pages and I want you to compare it. You see that kind of darkish blue that we've got going on here. I want you to compare it to this blue. Do you guys see that there's a difference? So he's made so much pollution, he's actually changed the color of the sky. My goodness, this guy. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, <coughs> so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year <coughs> to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about Gluppity Glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making Gluppity Glup also schloppity schlump. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Wunsler man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. 
I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I am telling you. I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering turning more truffula trees into sneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack from outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an ax on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall. The very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more thneeds, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke-smuggered stars. Now all that was left neath the bad-smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax, and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backwards glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hoisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was a long, long time ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Onceler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the one slur. He lets something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds, and truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, Protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends might come back. The end. So at the end of the book, there's a very special word that they say. Unless. They say, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot nothing is going to get better. It's not. And that is a really, really important message, kiddos, because one day you're gonna be the ones in charge of the earth. And when you are, it's going to be up to you to care about the plants and the animals that are on this earth and to decide how we wanna take care of them, okay? So, my challenge to you for this week is to figure out one thing you can do to help the planet. It could be planting some seeds, it could be picking up some trash, or you could do something like making a poster to remind people not to litter, to save energy, to use resources wisely, but I want you to figure out one way that you can help our planet this week and maybe even moving forward into the future. 
All right, until next week, see you guys later. Bye.